some of the action so far in this National League Championship Series. The San Francisco Giants up two games to none as this series leaves St. Louis and heads west. It is a gorgeous, gorgeous day by the Bay. San Francisco, California, game three. McCovey Cove, all the boats are circling, waiting for souvenirs. And because of the unique characteristics of Pac Bell Park, while well, these fans go nuts and get ready for their Giants to take the field, the umpires meeting is lasting a little longer than usual. Going over some of the ground rules because of the dimensions, the odd configuration of this ballpark, which gives this place so much character. Uh, they have built a lot of new retro ballparks over the last five or six years, in my opinion. There is no place like Pac Bell Park. The umpires today, as they meet, go over the rules. Dale Scott behind home plate with Jeff Kellogg, Tim Welke, Charlie Relaford, Randy Marsh, and Jeff Nelson. And now the Giants, up two games to none, take the field. The St. Louis Cardinals are running into a red-hot Giants club. They have not been behind in the last four games. The only inning that they were tied, the first inning after game five in the LDS. And that was a game started by Russ Ortiz. Russ Ortiz has kind of become the ace of this starting rotation for Dusty Baker. Here's the lineup, very different as they talked about during the pregame show with Kevin and Jeannie. Vina then Renteria batting second, Jim Edmonds hitting third. Albert Pujols cleans up with Drew and Wright. Tino Martinez, one hit in this postseason at first. Eli Morero's in left field today. Mike Matheny does the catching, and Chuck Finley will make his fourth career postseason start. The same can be said for Russ Ortiz, who so far is 2-0. He did that against the Braves in the division series. Pitching very, very well. Barrel-chested, big and strong. A strong lower body allows him allows him to drop and drive. Unusually, he's a high ball power pitcher, but he's only given up 15 home runs, only three in this ballpark. It is a very tough ballpark in which to hit the long ball. He dances through raindrops, meaning he can walk two in an inning and still get out without the opposition scoring. And can he flat hit? Because this ballpark is in a basin, the prevailing winds will take balls out to left field. But in right field, that wind not so conducive to the long ball. That's all the more reason of how remarkable a year Barry Bonds had last year when he led the all-time baseball Records in, as far as hitting home runs, 73 on the year, but right field, the ball does not carry well in this park at all. There's young Cannon Kyle, who is here to inspire this Cardinal team. And you can hear the shouts out of that Cardinal dugout as the Cardinals look for some life. It has been all San Francisco in this series to this point. And away we go in game three. Glad you're with us. And ball one from Russ Ortiz. The Cardinal approach today, according to their hitting instructor, Mitchell Page, make Russ Ortiz get the ball in the strike zone. Vina does, and it's one ball, one strike. Vina was 9 out of 15 in the division series, but only 1 for 9 in this LCS against San Francisco pitching, which in game two was unhittable. Jason Schmidt, an incredible start. Pena out in front. Ortiz took something off. One ball, two strikes. That's the very nature of postseason baseball. What have you done for me lately? Pena with a poor LCS. Good changeup from Ortiz. Ortiz trying to retire the Cardinal leadoff hitter with Renteria next. Will you talk to these Cardinals about Jason Schmidt? And they just to a man to shake their head and say he was not to be beaten. Oohs and ahs. 
Unbelievable. And he'll get another start in this series if it goes that far as Vina takes ball two. Two balls, two strikes. First time for the Giants and LCS play to be up two games to none. Pena goes the other way. That's Aurelia. One out. Edgar Renteria now. Change for Tony LaRussa in his lineup. And a lot of this, where Renteria has hit so far in this series, has had to do with the absence of Scott Rowland. Not having Rowland to hit behind the Cardinal cleanup hitter, Albert Pujols, has changed things around considerably for Tony LaRussa. And Rowland doesn't appear close to being able to play. Good fastball, strike one. The ideal Russ Ortiz fastball has a bit of a tail to it. Goes into left-handers and away from right-handers. No balls, one strike. Another good one. 93 miles per hour, it's 0-2. his timing and Russ Ortiz throws off a hitter's timing by curling the ball watch that move right there right here it's just a bit of a curl and it's said about guys like Russ Ortiz his foot hits the ground before his arm comes around it's a very difficult it's slightly but a very very difficult timing device and it's caused by that little curl behind the body Jim Edmonds now Base is empty in front of Edmonds with two out. And ball one. Russ Ortiz against the Cardinals in his career in seven starts. One and three with a 5.16 ERA. But he was a young pitcher. He's got a lot of experience. And he has moved to the front of the rotation for Dave Rigetti as pitching coach. And Dusty Baker. That's what he's done on his last eight starts. 8-0 eight with a 2.3 ERA. Three hitters have taken a strike here in the first inning, and Ortiz has been able to find it early in the count. It's one and one. There's Dave Rigetti, the pitching coach. Ortiz coming off the game five win in Atlanta to get the Giants into the NLCS. Two balls and a strike on Edmonds. Three hits in this series for Edmonds as he takes high again. It's three and one. Dusty Baker only moving the furniture around a little bit in his lineup for this game three. Same players, little different order at the bottom. But he has stayed with the same group. And they have delivered for him. Three balls and a strike. Edmonds, 6 out of 10 lifetime against Ortiz, and he draws a two-out first inning walk. Go back to the division series, game one in Atlanta. A winner, and then in game five, we were there last Monday night. Not only good work from Russ Ortiz as a starter, but how about the bullpen help? From Rodriguez, Worrell, and then Ned. In that game five, he retired the first two Braves and then walked two. 
And then the Braves did not score against him. But that was our point in the scouting report, how he dances through raindrops, pitching in and out of trouble throughout his time as a starter. Saw that graphic. Carl Helbel, by the way, did not win any games in the division series that year. You no. should know that. No. Runner at first, two out. And Albert Pujols ready to jump on the first pitch, strike one. The one thing that's always surprised, and I think even amazed, Tony La Russa, is no matter where he has put the young Albert Pujols, whether it's been at first base, left field, third base, and he's at third base today, what he does defensively stops when he crosses the white line, and he does what he normally does with the bat in his hands. He does not carry it over. The Cardinals are asking a lot out of him to change positions and end up at third base, in essence, filling in for Roland to help get Cairo back on the bench and Marrero in the lineup out in left field. Last three series in LCS play have not been good for Tony La Russa. Check on Edmonds, and that was almost thrown away. Good athletic play by J.T. Snow at first. J.T. Snow, out of your picture, at the top of your picture now, at the top of his game through the first two games in this series. Just a little better throw over this time, and Edmonds back easily. In case you're wondering, Edmonds, stolen base is not a big part of his game anymore. He stole four, was caught three times during the regular season. He will run. But he's not the threat he was early in his career. One on, two out. Pujols, strike two. Good slider for Ortiz. A late breaking slider. A lot of ways to freeze a hitter. You can see Pujols frozen with that good slider right on the corner. Ortiz trying to get around a two-out walk. Just a little low, two and two. Pujols, 34 home runs and number two in the National League during the regular season with 127 RBIs. Went deep in game one. Full count and Edmonds will get a head start at first. Not only with the different lineup for Tony La Russa, is there pressure on a guy like Renteria going up into the number two spot, but a lot is going to be heaped on the shoulders of J.D. Drew who waits on deck. Who do the Cardinals have to protect Pujols in their lineup? And today the answer they hope is J.D. Drew. I think that was Dave McKay, the first base coach, saying back, 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 back. And he was talking about J.T. Snow, and he was talking to Jim Edmonds, and that caused Russ Ortiz to step off. A 3-2. That'll find the seats. You can hear Dave McKay also saying, you're okay, you're okay. In relation to where J.T. Snow is and the kind of jump he's getting on a 3-2 pitch. Dave McKay, who played across the bay in Oakland in the early 80s, then was a part of Tony La Russa's staff. La Russa basically brought his entire staff with him to St. Louis when he came to the National League. Some have left. Others have stayed, like McKay and Dave Duncan. Another 3-2. To the left side and fair. Edmonds. 
Off to the races. Digging for third. They're going to hold him at third. And it's second and third, two out. Edmonds didn't pick up the ball, and then Okendo held him at third, and Pujols, you can see the frustration on his face. He thought he just put the Cardinals on top. Perhaps, perhaps the only ball that Pujols can pull, a breaking ball, and Edmonds going into third base. The third base coach has to wait on a ball down the left field line because if he brings the runner too far around the bag, then you could throw behind him. No chance for David Bell to get to that ball, but a good play by Barry Bonds getting to it quickly to keep Edmonds at third. Now it's J.D. Drew, second and third, two out. Ortiz trying to get around a walk and a double, and Drew pops it up into left center field. That should do it. Kenny Lofton, Cardinal strand two. Chuck Finley is an interesting story. He is making his fourth career postseason start. 0-2 coming in. The lineup for Dusty Baker, same names, Kenny Lofton, Rich Aurelia, Jeff Kent. Then in the middle, it's Bonds, Santiago, and Sanders moves up a spot against the left-hander. J.T. Snow hits seventh. And David Bell and Russ Ortiz, as Tim told you in his scouting report, he can hit. And he bats ninth for San Francisco. Here is the 39, about to be 40-year-old left-hander, Chuck Finley. There used to be another Finley across the bay with which, with whom uh, Giant fans are familiar. No relation to Charles O. Finley, who owned the A's for about 15 years. Kenny Lofton. Out of the way of ball one inside. Take a look on how he does it. Dusty Baker says the success of the Giants today depends on how Finley can get the splitter over. Opposite way, that's Renneria. Kicks it, and Lofton's on to start the day for the Giants. That ball going away from Renteria comes up and hits the heel of the glove, the hardest part of the glove. Usually that spells trouble for an infielder. Can't come up with it, and Lofton's on on the error. Well, we mentioned it in game two. There's no doubt you go into a series that involves Barry Bonds and you highlight Barry Bonds and the opponents highlight Bonds and all you talk about is how are they going to pitch to Bonds? Will they pitch to Bonds? But it's been those around Barry Bonds that have put the Giants up two games to none and Aurelia is right at the top of that list with his two home runs in game two. Three out of seven in this series, 286 overall, and he's hit four home runs in this postseason. In the first game, Rich Aurelia sacrificed. That was the first inning of game one. He does here. It's out in front of the plate, and the only play to first. Down to second is Lofton on the sacrifice, 2-3. That's usually a ball that Mike Muthini will get out and throw to second base. But the speed of Lofton combined with Aurelia running right in front of him. Perfectly normal that he do that. And Matheny has to go to first base. But Dusty Baker has bunted three times in this series when we didn't think he would. With Aurelia on two sacrifices and the squeeze play with Ramon Martinez in the ninth inning the other night in St. Louis. Here's Jeff Kent. Runner at second, one out. Kent, three out of nine in this series, 286 overall. And has not gone deep in the postseason at 37 during the regular year. Runner at second, one out. Strike one. Chuck Finley was on the list of a number of teams that were hoping to get to the playoffs, and the Giants are one of those teams. Trying to work out a deal with Cleveland, the Cardinals eventually did. You see what he did in 14 starts with St. Louis, 7 and 4 with a 3.80 RA. Giants trying to get the lead. Kent, shallow center field. Vina out, Edmonds in, Edmonds, two gone. 
And now lefty lefty does that matter do you put bonds on and pitch to Santiago you would imagine. But we'll see and they're talking about that on the mound right now as Matheny went out and discussed it with Finley. You would imagine but I wouldn't do it here. I pitched the bonds with the left hander left handers are hitting 180 against Chuck Finley this year. But it's been so customary to walk bonds with first base open regardless of the situation and they're going to pitch to him. I think this is absolutely the right move right here. You see the numbers for Finley this year against left handed batters. Here's one named Bonds. Runner at second, two out. And ball one outside. Bonds is not on that list this year because Finley is facing San Francisco for the first time this season. Certainly the luxury, though, for Finley to not have to come after Barry Bonds if he falls behind. Runner at second, two out. Outside, inside, two and oh. Benito Santiago, who had four RBIs in game one, may get a chance. Matheny way outside. And they're pitching around him now, if not earlier, it's 3 0. Now they'll probably walk him with the count three balls, no strikes, if not intentionally, then otherwise. Bonds with the eyes of a condor. Even farther outside for Matheny. And that'll put two on with two out. An error opened the inning, then the bunt by Aurelia. Bridge is saying what I hit two home runs in game two and he asked me to bunt. Yeah come on I bunt before that game I bunt after that game. Kent flied out a walk to Bonds. 18 consecutive with a walk and here's Santiago. And that's what he says and that's what he will get. So far three out of nine the four RBIs. Coming in game one. The Cardinals stranded two in their first. The Giants have two on, two out. And a strike on the outside corner to Santiago. Benito drove home 74 during the regular season. See how little the baseball looks in the hand of Chuck Finley. 6'6, 225. Broken bat in the hole. Renteria. Oh. Vania wasn't covering. Safe at first. And the bases are loaded. An error on Renteria and a huge mistake on Fernando Vina. What in the world was Vina thinking about? Playing Santiago straight up, no problem to get to second base. He tries to recover by throwing to first. Not in time. Vina has only one spot in that second base. And what could be lost in all that is a 37-year-old catcher, Benito Santiago, running hard the entire way and beating the relay throw, in essence, by Vina. Yeah. And that gives the Giants a bases loaded two out chance in the first inning for the hitless Reggie Sanders. It's a fielder's choice no error on the play and strike one on Sanders. If no physical error clearly a mental error by Fernando Vina. Lofton bonds and Santiago. Pena wasn't that far from the bag. He obviously took for granted the fact that Renteria would go to first base. Take nothing for granted. But he did, and it could cost the Cardinals. And really, when you think about it, why would you with Renteria going to his right in the hole to Absolutely. field that ground ball? It's a much tougher throw, much longer throw, than simply going to second base. Base is loaded for the Giants. Reggie Sanders. One ball, one strike. Two 
Two slams in the career of Reggie Sanders with the bases juiced. Mentioned hitless. He is 0 for 8. No RBIs in this series and hitting only 154 with one RBI in the postseason. Cardinals have been pitching him upstairs. He is a low ball hitter. The 1-1. Into shallow center field. Out is Vina. In is Edmonds. Vina makes the play in front of Edmonds, even though Edmonds was calling for the ball. Now Edmonds is the one that comes up with it. You talk about a crazy play. Look at this. My God. Vina up into the air, oh. and Edmonds somehow made that catch. Are you kidding me? That's a catch he didn't see. Finley holding his breath. What a first inning. No score. The League Championship Series on Fox is brought to you by MasterCard. There are some things money can't buy. For everything else, there's MasterCard. By GMC, we are professional grade. And by Sprint, introducing PCS Vision. Clearly a whole new way to look at wireless. No matter how many replays you look at of that last play, which ended the first inning, it's just stunning that Jim Edmonds caught the baseball. And it, it only points out that Fernando Vina, I think everybody would agree was trying to do too much to make up for the mistake on the ball hit by Santiago and nearly turned it into a disaster by Snow. Tino Martinez a line drive and JT Snow up to get it one out in the second. That might be the most routine play we've seen thus far. <laughs> we saw nothing routine about that bottom of the first, which has got to be the, the goofiest, scoreless half inning that I've ever seen. Now it's Eli Marrero getting the start. A starter in game one of this series. Ball one. The Cardinals, in essence, made really three mistakes in the first inning. But get out of it without giving up any runs. Marrero takes a breaking ball for a strike, and it's one and one. If there is not a lot to the point that you made, there is some, certainly something to the point that you made that Vina, after the bad play of not covering second base to end the inning for the third out, went too hard on that play in shallow center field. inexcusably not covering second base and then inexcusably but more understandably going too far into center field trying to make up for that first bonehead play and that's there's no getting around it. Morero two and two. Eli Morero the former catcher now doesn't really enjoy catching as much as he once did playing the outfield concentrating on that and he'll have his hands full and a tough left field here at Pac Bell Park. Russ Ortiz has struck out one. That off the helmet of the catcher Santiago and the count still two and two. No catcher who's ever played another position wishes that he were back catching. Come on. No that's true. The guy catches throughout the minor leagues. He gets to the big leagues. He's a catcher. He's the, the focal point. The play starts with him. He gives the signs all that other junk that I hear from you. And you say, once you leave, you don't want to go back. Then you see left field and you say, where have you been all my life? <laughs> Here's a 2-2 pitch to Eli Marrero from Russ Ortiz. Full count. Piazza won't go. He doesn't want to leave. Yeah, but he's never been to another position. So you're saying maybe if he tried it, right, he'd like it. That's right. A 3 2 pitch. Morero pops it up, back in out of play. Mikey needs to try it. You'll like it. <laughs> Russ Ortiz ran the count full with. Pujols back in the first inning after walking Edmonds. 
Edmonds got a walking start off first base and didn't score on the double by Pujols. And then Drew flied out. Now after a line drive out, Ortiz tries to put away Marrero. Barry Bonds, glasses on. In the second, two out. Here is a package of what happened to Fernando Vina in the first inning. Why weren't you there? Inexplicably, but understandably going too far, but saved by Edmonds, and I don't think Edmonds ever saw the ball, but it landed in his glove. That's a remarkable play by Jim Edmonds. By default, the Cardinals get out without a run being scored by the Giants. Hmm. Four-time Gold Glove Award winner Jim Edmonds. And now with two out, Mike Matheny takes strike one. No matter how many times you watch that replay from the view from behind home plate you just can't see the ball end up in the glove of Jim Edmonds no. and I know Jim Edmonds didn't see the ball end up in the glove of Jim Edmonds that's into right center field slicing to Sanders and the Cardinals go in order in the second another look at that play out in center might turn into a big play before the end of the day Edmonds made it because of that still no score the league championship series on Fox is brought to you by GMC. We are professional grade. Been a few professionals and ended up living there. What a beautiful shot. My goodness. From that angle. Yeah. The reverse of that angle is no good. No. If you're stuck. <laughs> Here's JT Snow first up. Bottom three in the order for the Giants. Snow, Bell, and Ortiz. And JT, that hurt. Off his front leg or foot. Snow, as you talked about in our opening, has been another one of the support players around Barry Bonds that has really chipped in and played a terrific series. You expected defensively, but he's three out of eight in this set and 333 overall in the postseason. Gene Klein's a hitting instructor of the Giants, said that before the League Division series, J.T. Snow looked at every at bat of the season on videotape, every one, to try to figure out something. It's worked. One ball, one strike. There are the numbers for J.T. in the month of October. Finley with a count of one and one. Catches the inside part, one and two. Cardinal, Cardinal outfield is about straight away. I think with J.T. Snow, you can shade him around toward left field. He has good power, and against a left-handed, hard-throwing pitcher like Finley, he's more inclined to hit the ball to left field. Down and in, two balls, two strikes. David Bell waiting on deck. Chuck Finley made three relief appearances back in 1986 with the California Angels. That was an LCS play against Boston. Went two innings, no runs, one hit. That was his first year in the big leagues, and here he is in 2002 pitching for a contract for next season. He's a free agent to be. On three and two, Snow fights it off. Cardinals have some question marks as to what they're going to do with their pitching staff. Behind Matt Morris. Not only is Chuck Finley a free agent, but Woody Williams is as well. But those are decisions they hope will be made until the month of November rolls in. That's out of play as well. History on the side of the Giants. To repeat, no team has ever won the first two games on the road in LCS history, gone on to lose the series. You look at that bottom note. 
1987 only the Yankees this foul have been a team and it happened in World Series play to drop the first two games at home and then go on and win the series they went to Atlanta swept three there and came home and won game six to start this run that Joe Torre and the Yankees have been on. Another 3-2 pitch to Snow. Ripped. Base hit. JT is swinging it well. What a good at bat for the San Francisco first baseman. I was thinking the same thing. Fighting off some nasty fastballs in on the hands. And then he gets the high fastball over the middle of the plate. Hammers it to right field. I know this sounds strange, but that's the first hit for the Giants. I say it sounds strange because of that wacky bottom of the first when they loaded the bases without a hit nine pitch at bat and JT Snow wins that battle with Chuck Finley here's David Bell one on nobody out strike one on Bell David homered in game one he's three out of seven in this series 261 overall Chuck Finley, the most important start in his long career. Missing outside, a ball and a strike. 470 starts in Chuck Finley's career. 200 victories. And he got to 200 at the end of the season, last start. His career in the postseason, 0-2. So fifth on the active list. With a total of 200 wins. One ball, one strike on David Bell. And a check on Snow. There is one guy watching this game in the Anaheim Angel Clubhouse who is very much interested in how Chuck Finley is doing. Troy Percival, very close friends. As a matter of fact, Percival called Finley when the Angels clinched a postseason berth in Texas. And as part of the celebration, he talked to Finley. A 1-1. Two balls and a strike. How about the Angels' bullpen in the ALCS? Eight and two-thirds innings. Percival got the save last night. 1-0 record. And two saves and two chances for that pen. And what a good game between Minnesota and Anaheim yesterday. It surely was. 2-1 to one Angels on the home run by Gloss. A 2-1 to Bell. Too far outside, 3-1, and one, and the Giants trying to start some trouble with the bottom of their lineup. A lot of managers in baseball would send the runner 3-1 count. But in my view, it's an offensive count. David Bell's going to try to choose an inside fastball and hammer it. And you don't need that confusion of having the runner run because right-handed hitters in particular see that. 3-2, yes. 3-1, no. Not running as Bell hammers one, but foul down the left field line. Dusty Baker trying to keep everything in the background quiet for David Bell to hammer one. He hits it hard, but foul. So it's a full count. Now we will see. JT Snow, and if he takes off at first. Not running as Bell gets a base hit to right. Back to back singles, two on, nobody out for the Giants. By not sending the runner, the chance of a double play is greater. 
But if Bell makes an out, either a strikeout or a flyout, then Snow's at first base, and then you bunt him over. As it stands, Bell, on a good piece of hitting, leaves it up to Ortiz. Who you might think he's a pitcher, bunting situation. They have swung a lot this year, the Giants, that is, with their pitchers hitting. Showing bunt, taking ball. Down and in, ball one. What happens on that bunt play? Renteria covers second base. Bina moves toward first, and Martinez is in. Ortiz handles the bat very well. 2.46 this year, and the best time to allow him to swing is when the infield's in a state of confusion. Remember, Pujols just switched into the infield at third base for this game. So here's an opportunity for the Giants, for the guy who hasn't been at third base really consistently since the Cardinals picked up Scott Rowland. And it's a difficult play for a third baseman as Pujols is in in front of the bag and on the first two chances has not been charging. Two on, nobody out. And the bunt is a fair ball. Base is loaded. This has been a nightmare two innings for the Cardinals. Chuck Finley's got a break for the ball. As it stands, a right-handed throwing Tina Martinez has to come all the way across, hesitates because he's wondering where's Finley. Another fielder's choice, but the Cardinals could have three errors or four errors in this game already easily. Finley doesn't move. Martinez has to, too much to do, loses the handle. Watch Finley. He's a left-handed thrower. He doesn't move. Martinez has to. This has been a horrible game for the Cardinals thus far. They scored a base hit for Ortiz. And the bases are loaded for Kenny Lofton. Reached on an error his first time up. What a chance for the Giants. That had Lofton bailing and it's strike one. Lofton's only RBI in this LCS came on the home run he hit against Matt Morris. Lofton has been at the center of Tony La Russa's post and pregame press conferences. He's the center of attention now as he just got out of the way of a pitch under his hands one and one. Talked to Tony La Russa before the game about Kenny Lofton. He said the thing about Kenny Lofton is he's playing a great series. A 1-1. Martinez will fire home. Out. No other play. Force out. 3-2. And the bases are loaded with Aurelia coming up. J.T. Snow may have gotten a piece of Mike Matheny. I don't think there would have been a play on Lofton anyway. But you hear, you see the takeout slide at second base. You rarely see it at home. But that's what Snow was trying to do. Watch the left foot of Matheny. Snow tries to hook it. And if there is a throw to first base, it would be Aaron. Here comes the slide right there. He did get a piece of it. Same thing applies. You can take a catcher out of a double play just like you can a second baseman or a shortstop. Now the bases are loaded one out for Rich Aurelia, who dropped down a bunt his first time up. RBI chance Aurelia. And a strike on the outside part of the plate. Cardinal defense is pushed back as they look for the double play ball. A mistake in the inning, another mental mistake. This one is on Finley. Trying to get around it, the 0-1 pitch. One ball, one strike.
Finley throwing hard. Those two at bats by JT Snow and David Bell, both 3 2 base hits with a 3 2 count, particularly JT Snow. Fouled off three, base hit against a tough left hander. A 1 1 to Aurelia. Two balls and a strike, and what did you say entering game one? The edge went to the Giants because of the production and the hits and the depth of this lineup predominantly at the number seven, eight spots compared to the Cardinal lineup. So much more balanced throughout the Giants lineup than the Cardinals. Finley behind in the count, two balls and a strike. Dangerous count for Finley right here. Aurelia pops it into left center field. That's gonna put the Giants on top. Tagging and scoring is Bell, one to nothing, San Francisco on a sack fly by Rich Aurelia. I'll tell you, the Cardinals are coming apart at the seams defensively. It's as though they don't have a clue about how to play defense, and they are very fortunate this is only a one-nothing ball game. Edmonds makes this play. Now watch his throw back into the infield. Nobody's there. Martinez has to back up the play. It's as though they've never played defense together before. Two on with two out. Here's Jeff Kent trying to make it a bigger inning. One to nothing Giants. Up the middle, Jeff Kent. Here comes Ortiz. Now they're going to hold him late. As Edmonds came up ready to fire and Russ Ortiz was held at third by Sonny Jackson. Bases loaded with Bonds coming up. Only reason Kent does not have an RBI on this hit. Ortiz is not a fast runner. Good job by Edmonds charging and throwing in a hurry. Bases loaded for Bonds. Ball one to Barry Bonds, who drew a walk his first time up. Popped up shallow right. J.D. Drew coming in. Fernando Vina going out. The two come together, and Drew ends up with a catch. And how this game is only one to nothing San Francisco with the way the St. Louis Cardinals have played the first two innings. It's hard to imagine one mistake after another defensively for the Cardinals. They get away with another and the Giants get only one. One thousand feet above us aerial coverage of this afternoon's game and the surrounding Bay Area being provided by the Saturn Lightship Saturn and its retailers hope you're enjoying the National League Championship Series and we thank them for joining us. This is one of the prettiest cities oh, in the world. Forget just North America the United States go bigger than that the world got it a gorgeous place in this little jewel sitting right down here in the Bay. Pack Bell Park as Finley tries to hammer at the first pitch and fouls it strike one. Buy me some peanuts and crack a bat. <laughs> That's Jeff it. Huh? Finley, yeah. So now he's got to beg another teammate to give him a bat. Can't imagine Finley bringing more than one out here with him. I'm going to guess that's not Finley's bat. What did you decide? What's the most memorable moment in Major League Baseball history? Tune into the pregame show prior to game four of the World Series to see the winner of the MasterCard presents Major League Baseball's most memorable moment. Live on Fox 8 Eastern, Wednesday, October 23rd. No balls, one strike on Finley. No balls, two strikes on Finley. When you're 39 years old and you pitched in the National League where they use the pitcher as the hitter for only two months, you don't have a bat order. No. You may have some bats, but they're for you to sign for friends in the offseason. Finley's going to run and make it down to first base on strike three. 
kind of game is this, Tim? I don't know. I mean, what's happening? I don't know. The Giants just came off a half inning where they get a run on four hits. The Cardinals have made one mistake after another. And now on a check swing on a pitch in the dirt, Finley ends up at first. Strikeout and a wild pitch. That ball uh, got outside the arms of Santiago. What a catcher tries to do on balls in the dirt is to keep it within the arms. When it gets outside the arms, it's a chance for that ball to carry him off, and that's what happened there. A strikeout and on first base because of the wild pitch. So now the Cardinals have an opportunity. First time they put their leadoff man on, and of course it comes on a strikeout. Vina grounded out his first time up. And Santiago takes one in the dirt. Ball one. When you don't keep the balls in the dirt between the arms, then it has a chance to carry them away. And so instead of in here, the ball ends up hitting out there, and that's why it got away from Santiago. A 1 0 pitch to Vina into center field. Lofton, it's over his head and will roll all the way to the wall. Finley will go to third and hold. Into second is Vina. That ball took off on Lofton, and it's been a twilight zone start here in game three. Second and third, nobody out. Rod Serling should be managing at least one of these teams off the tip of the glove of Lofton. Kenny going to his left, and that ball did take off. It's going to be scored a double for Fernando Vina. Finley, no experience on the bases, going back to first base. And Vina, who ordinarily would have had a triple on a ball like this, had to look up at second, knowing that Finley's not going to score and stop. So now here's Renteria reinserted into the number two spot. And a ball in the dirt as Ortiz has been testing Santiago in this third inning. Renteria struck out his first time one out of nine in this LCS, but drove home 83 during the regular season. Finley and Vina, the runners. That's into right field and will send Sanders back. Finley will tag and score. Vina will tag in advance. It's a 1-1 game, and the go-ahead run is 90 feet away with one out. Sack fly, Edgar Renteria. Two for the price of one. He does two things. He plates the runner and moves Vina to third base. Not a bad pitch by Ortiz. Good hitting by Renteria. Hitting it deep enough not only to score Finley, but to get Vina to third. Finley walks home to tie the game. And Vina moving easily to third. So now Jim Edmonds digs his way in. And an opportunity for the Cardinals to take their first lead of this LCS. That's foul. In San Francisco, they have ball dudes. Gentlemen, except to generians generally. That's uh, that's Harry Hallsworth. Oh, Harry, down all right. the right field line. Even Harry can't catch the ball today. <laughs> but Harry's Nobody 67 years the... old. Oh, oh, he's not a centurion. He's not. Harry, I'm sorry. Harry's 67. Trying to add three years to Harry's life. You know what that means? Ball one on a pitch in the dirt. Well, someone in their 70s. Now that. He's 78. That's Len Hurstein. Two years from being an octogenarian. That's true. Yes. So you have Len on your left and Harry on your right. Harry, Harry tougher than Len because he's playing without glasses today. Well, Harry's a throwback. <laughs> Ball dudes. What a place. Jim Edmonds, 6 out of 10 in his career against Russ Ortiz with a home run and five RBIs. Walked his first time up. Runner at third for St. Louis and a ground ball to the shortstop. St. Louis has the lead on a ground out by Edmonds, 2-1 to one Cardinals. 
Started with a strikeout and a wild pitch. Right now has played a two run. And it's the Cardinals' first lead of this year. We've said it many times uh, on our broadcast that strikeouts uh, to open the inning with a strikeout, the best way to score more than you one run. You can't get it. Just package that up and throw it away. <laughs> Man. Next time you say it, I'm calling you on it. Here's Albert Pujols, and there's a pitch over below ball one. So again, the bottom of the second, after leaving the bases loaded in the first inning, the Giants got one run on four hits and had Barry Bonds to the plate with the bases loaded two out, and he flied into shallow right. 2-0 and on Pujols. So Bonds with a chance moments ago, and... Couldn't drive the ball. The only hit in the inning was a ball that arguably could have been caught by Lofton. See the route that Lofton took to it. Easy to see that the ball deceived him and jumped, took off. And this was the result. A double for Vina. 3-0 is the count on Albert Pujols. And that's a two-out walk. Second walk handed out by Ortiz this afternoon. Here's J.D. Drew who flied into shallow center with runners at second and third, two out back in the first. You saw Kenny Lofton with those glasses on. The glare in the outfield here is perhaps worse than any glare in the major leagues. Chicago, uh, Chicago Wrigley Field, I would say is tough in right field but the sun field in this ballpark is left field during the season of course we're in the middle of October I don't know uh, whether it's as severe as this during the summer one on two out and Drew strike one but how about the weather in general better in October through the, about the middle of December and it is in other months. Mark Twain's famous line, worst summer I ever spent, or worst winter I ever spent, was a summer in San Francisco. Runner at first, two out. J.D. Drew takes ball one. Drew bothered by tendonitis in his right knee. Remember, that was all the talk about Mark McGuire and why his career came to an end. That was in McGuire's right knee, which was his back knee. Front knee for Drew, so he can still get drive. He has a home run in this series as a pinch hitter in game one. Off the end of the bat, good pitch for Ortiz, one and two. Crowd trying to climb back in it. As Ortiz has Drew set up at one and two. Almost overthrew his catcher. And Ortiz will do that from time to time. It's two and two. Yeah, wild high in the strike zone. A little curl again. And that cut fastball. Good play by Santiago reason it's a good play is when you're in a crouch it's tough to go that high game four ALCS twins and angels next angels up two games to one full count and Pujols will get a jump over at first be John Lackey pitching for the angels later today against Brad Radke. Today a matchup of Ortiz and Finley. Cardinals lead two to one third inning. Okay, 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 okay. Runner goes and Drew fouls another. The stats division series against Oakland Radke so good in that clincher two and zero with an ERA of one and a half. 
And the first career playoff start for John Lackey. Who was nine and four with a 3.66 ERA down the stretch for Anaheim. That's next right now. It's game three of this NLCS with the Giants up two games to none. Pujols goes, ball four, two on with two out. And Tino Martinez, who lined out his first time, but line out or not, it was one out of 19 in this postseason. Has an RBI chance as Rigetti will go out and talk to Ortiz. Joe, you mentioned Brad Ratke pitching for the Twins uh, later on this afternoon. Brad Ratke probably understands a game like this. Because in game one of the division series across the bay in Oakland, the Minnesota Twins committed three errors in the first two innings, and they came back to win. The Cardinals are hoping for the same today. October's magical matchups continue tomorrow on Fox NFL Sunday, beginning with America's number one pregame show. Then it's Terry Glenn returning to New England for the Packers. Take on Tom Brady. Good game. Or the Panthers and Cowboys, Falcons and Giants are other regional action. All part of a full weekend of magical matchups. NFL and baseball on Fox. Tino Martinez after a high fastball. Strike one. Frustrated to say the least. 75 RBIs during the regular season. But Tino Martinez could wipe away a lot of bad at bats during the regular year with a good October. And so far that hasn't happened. Two on, two out. One ball, one strike. The only hit in the inning, the double by Vina that went off the glove of Lofton in center. But back to back, back to back walks with two out by Ortiz. And now ball two to Tino Martinez. Woody Williams and Cannon Kyle watching from the corner of the Cardinal dugout. In for strike two, two and two. Little squirter out in front of the plate. Santiago, what a play. Great play. Had to grab it before it hopped foul. Spin and throw in one motion, and Martinez is now one for 20. The Cardinals get two runs on only one hit. Strand a couple, and after two and a half, lead by one. Beautiful day in San Francisco here at Pac Bell Park. It's two to one. The Cardinals on top now, and Santiago tries to bunt and pops it foul into the seats for strike one. You have to go back to what game three of the division series, Tim, to yeah. find the last time the Giants were behind in a game. Mm -hmm. Thirty-eight consecutive innings when they didn't trail, and they trail here two to one. How about that play by Santiago, though? And you were right, Joe. I mean. He not only pivoted, barehanded it, but kept the ball from going foul and got Tino Martinez to end the second inning by three and a half, four steps. Good pitch from Finley, strike two. Well, there's no lacking of confidence on the part of Benito Santiago. Some catchers may have let this thing hop foul instead of trying to make this play with two runners on. See that throw sailing down the right field line. Instead, Santiago saw it as a chance to get Russell Ortiz out of trouble, and he pounced on it. Here's a no two pitch from Finley. Ball one. Benito, uh, quite forthright about the fact that he took the game for granted. He took life for granted until that horrible automobile accident in the spring of 1998. 
He was with Toronto at the time. He missed most of the season. And since that time, he has appreciated the game more and his life more. It's a cliche to say it was a wake-up call, but it was just that. Benito Santiago said it was a wake-up call. Got him straightened up, and now at the age of 37, we've seen him throw out Kerry Robinson from his knees, trying to steal second in this series, and that play, and the top of the third, as Santiago takes strike three, fooled on that pitch, and the first strikeout for Chuck Finley today. Chuck really mixed in his curveball right there, and he gets really on top of it. That's as fine a curveball as Chuck Finley could throw. That's a downer right there. Nasty. We were in talking to Tony LaRusso before the game about that breaking ball and what a difference it makes that Finley is throwing it now compared to just fastball split fingered pitch. LaRusso said it doesn't allow the opposition to eliminate one pitch and look for something to crush. Yeah, it gives them a different look, and that's what pitchers are always looking for, an opportunity to, to give a hitter another look. Here's Sanders, who's 0 for 9 in this series. And Terea. Sanders 0 for 10. And with two out, nobody on. JT Snow will be the hitter. Renteria in front of that ball, but it was a great Tony Kubek. Uh, Tony was the first guy that I heard talk about Hispanic infielders, guys from Latin America, who felt fielded the ball off to the side, tried to backhand everything. And the reason for that. The infields in the Dominican Republic, in Puerto Rico, in Venezuela, in Colombia, where Renteria is from, they're so rocky and hard, you don't dare get in front of a ball down there. You have to feel the balls off to the side. Fastball is poured into J.T. Snow. Snow didn't like the call, so that's his mild protest getting out. Strike one. Combine a rocky infield. With the equipment yeah. that players have and young kids have in the Latin American countries. And I know you've done a lot of research on it. Then it really will, really will help you understand why guys didn't get in front of the ball. Yeah, I mean, uh, Renteria, for example, used to take bags of empty cement when the construction workers used to pour the cement out. He and his cohorts would take the bags and then fashion the bags in the form of a glove. There was no store-bought glove. The, the, the children in the Dominican Republic, certainly not a glove that big, the children in the Dominican Republic use milk cartons to fashion gloves with. Milk cartons. Here's a one-two pitch to Snow. To the right side, Tino Martinez chips in with his glove, and the inning is over as the Giants go in order for the first time today. Do you have a demonstration you'd like to show the people of this country? Perhaps. Oh, that's weak. <laughs> Come on, say something. Yes. Two to one, fourth inning. The League Championship Series on Fox is brought to you by Old Navy's Painter's Pants. The Handyman's Classic. This thing started out as anything but a classic. Mistakes left and right. The pitching of Chuck Finley able to minimize the mistakes against the Cardinals. And Finley had a mistake mixed in there as well on a bunt. And then Russ Ortiz. The bad break of starting an inning, last inning with a strikeout. Finley reached on a wild pitch. And then a ball that could have been caught in center went for a double. Sack fly, RBI ground out. It's 2-1 to one St. Louis as we go to the fourth. Bottom three in the lineup. Marrero, Matheny, and Chuck Finley. Cardinals have been out hit 4-2. That's foul. We talked about Edgar Renteria and using cement bags 
fashioned to fashion a fielder's glove and those children in the Dominican Republic using milk cartons to fashion gloves. Here's a no two pitch from Ortiz to Marrero leading off and strike three on the outside corner and Guillermo Moda of the Los Angeles Dodgers shows us how to make a glove. You fold the ends of the milk cart. Then you flatten it. Then you break it in. I mean, you got to have a broken in glove. You cut off one end. And then you cut something for the finger. And then you play ball. Step one isn't drink the milk. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, of course. And you got to drink the milk. But then you come up with something like I have in my hand right here. As Matheny takes, I guess, inside. Pretty good pitch for Ortiz. Ball one. You've been carrying around these things <laughs> through airports yep. throughout the entire month of October. And I this, have. Tim, is the opportunity of a lifetime. So don't blow it. Well, obviously, obviously we have uh, emptied the milk in this cart. And that becomes a milk cart for a glove. Hey, can you imagine that, though? I mean, they break them in. Sometimes they go back. They paint them. They put, they will put their names on them and use these. Matheny gets into one to left. Back at the wall is Bonds. This ball is gone. Home run Matheny. He has hit in every Cardinal postseason game this October, and it's 3-1 to one St. Louis. Mike Matheny hasn't homered since early, early in the season. And here on Saturday, October 12th, it's a game three NLCS home run. It looked like a hanging curveball from Ortiz. No glove is going to catch that ball. The curveball, or maybe a slider. It looked like a curveball, but it was something gripped tighter than is normally gripped. Finley gets a pretty good rip at that pitch. Lofton back on the run. What a catch. What a catch by Kenny Lofton recovering to drag that in as Finley surprised everyone with how far that ball went. Talked about it before. The ball carries to center on around to the left field line, but a spectacular play by Kenny Lofton. Fighting the sun and the wind to make the play. Nicely done. So now with two out, nobody on. Here's Fernando Vina. A double in his last at bat shows bunt. And he pulled away from strike one. Just off the middle of the plate, a little bit inside, and Bonds can't get to it. You look at Mike Matheny, who was a dear friend of Daryl Kyle, and you saw Cannon Kyle in the foreground of that last shot. When Mike Matheny was in Chicago and got the news that Daryl Kyle had passed away, Mike took the Rolex watch that Daryl Kyle had given him when he was a 20 game winner the year before and pulled the stem out of the Rolex watch to mark the time when it hit him that his dear friend Daryl Kyle had passed away. Oh boy. And now there's Mike Matheny hitting his first home run since April 26th to put the Cardinals on top by two here in the fourth Adam inning of game go. three received by Cannon Kyle down in the Cardinal dugout. I'll be, I'll be with you. Mike Matheny did not want to ever wear that watch again and wanted to mark that time in his life when his good friend was no longer with him. Shattered bat. Vina taken care of by Kent. Mike Matheny goes deep. He'll go back to work behind the plate.
and a handshake for Cannon Kyle. Cardinals down two games to none, lead game three by two. This game slips into the bottom of the fourth inning. Russ Ortiz in his frustration after giving up the home run to Matheny. Hit only three during the regular season. Away we go, and Chuck Finley misses outside with ball one. Bell, Ortiz, and Lofton. The eight, nine, and one hitters for San Francisco now down by two. One thing you learn as a major league player, if you're going to pound something, pound it with the other hand. If you're a right-handed pitcher, use your left hand to get mad with. And Russ Ortiz, is that a lesson that he took to heart? No. Pitching hand and arm and all. Slamming his glove down on the bench. Two balls and a strike as Finley falls behind Bell, who has a single and has scored the only run of the day for San Francisco. The 2-1. Three balls and a strike. And the Giants would love to get Bell on and allow Ortiz the luxury, if they choose to do it, of bunting Bell down to second base. The 3 1. A leadoff walk. Good start to the inning for San Francisco as the second walk is handed out by Finley. Our RadioShack.com trivia question. Rich Aurelia has 12 runs batted in this postseason. Which player drove in the most runs in a single postseason in Major League history? And you have to take into consideration the extra playoff rounds that are out there now. So more opportunities. So think about that as you make your guess. Here is Russ Ortiz to punt. And it's perfect. Matheny takes care of the out at first. Sacrifice good 2-4. He can swing the bat. And he can lay him down as well. Ortiz has dropped down two good bunts. Watch Mike Matheny wave off Tino Martinez. Because he's going toward first base. And he makes the play rather easily. But an absolutely perfect bunt by Russ Ortiz. So an opportunity for the Giants to get that run back. Bell at second for Kenny Lofton. And Aurelia, the focus of our RadioShack.com trivia question on deck. Lofton 0 for 2. Ripped, caught, double play. Bad break for the Giants on a screaming line drive caught by Tino Martinez and Bell doubled off second. Can't hit the ball any harder than that. The double play sends this game to the fifth. Three to one, St. Louis. Back after this from your local Fox station. Well, the Coast Guard is working today trying to rescue a sinking vessel out in the bay. That's what the Cardinals are trying to do by the Bay. Rescue a sinking vessel losing the first two games ahead in this one. Might be a little extreme. It may be a little extreme, yeah. but you know, what the heck. <laughs> Ball one low and away. Trying to segue in as, yeah. we, as we announce who's doing it. Yeah, trying to segue, yeah. Somebody on our crew suggested that boat was named the St. Louis Rams. I don't know who would have said that. That's on the inside corner. One ball, one strike. A little tough start. Uh, that boat has a tough time starting. The 0-5 Rams will take on the Oakland Raiders in St. Louis tomorrow. Here's a 1-1 pitch to Renteria. Renteria in the hole. He has hit a sack fly to right. And as Tim said at the time, it was important. Because not only did it get Finley to the plate, but it also was deep enough to right to advance Vina to third. And Vina scored on the ground out by Jim Edmonds. Made it two to one, a home run by Matheny in the fourth inning, as made it three to one. 
Here's a 1-2. Into right field. Sanders back. Has room. One out. Let's stay with the whole football theme. Fox NFL Sunday returns tomorrow and J.B., Terry, Howie, and Jimmy. Get you ready for kickoff this week. You'll hear from Brett Favre and his new band of receivers. See how they are going to attack the New England Patriots defense. Plus, J.B. talks with Redskins head coach Steve Spurrier and quarterback Patrick Ramsey. He's a new starter in D.C. That returns tomorrow at noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. Home of the Raiders out there, the Coliseum. One out, nobody on, Jim Edmonds. Strike one, big rip by the Cardinal center fielder who has walked and driven in a run with a ground out. Part of the order for Russ Ortiz, and he took care of Renteria to start it. And he's 0-2 on Edmonds. The Giants, in the bottom of this fifth, will have the two, three, and four hitters, Aurelia, Kent, and Barry Bonds. Crowd looking for the fourth strikeout from Ortiz. He's walked three. Been able to get around those walks so far. Here's an 0-2. Edmonds, who is a California native, played with the Angels. And looking ahead, hoping that his Cardinals can get past San Francisco. And then he can visit Southern California with his Cardinal team. The Angels were in St. Louis this season during interleague play. Jim Edmonds hit a home run in his first at bat against his old teammates. Ball one to Edmonds. There will be an Angel or an ex-Angel factor regardless of which team plays the Angels if the Angels beat the Minnesota Twins. J.T. Snow for the Giants, and then Chuck Finley and Jim Edmonds of the Cardinals. A one-two pitch, Edmonds to ball two. That series, however, has all the earmarks of going seven. That Minnesota Angels series. It really does. Last night, Jared Washburn turned in a great start. As did Eric Milton. Boy, does he have an arm? Here's a 2-2 pitch. Edmonds, another foul ball. And then that matchup today, I'm sure Mike Sosha and the Angels are wondering what they're going to get out of John Lackey, who makes his first start in October. The Twins can pretty much count on what they're going to get out of Brad Radke. With one out, it was 0-2. Now a 2-2 pitch to Edmonds is ripped down the right field line. Hooking. Foul. Almost a splashdown. Splash hits here at Pac Bell Park. Our balls hit over the right field fence. Fair. This one hit. Had the distance, and it was a splashdown, but foul. But they only they count. Don't count. They, they only count the splash hits down the right field line. By the Giants. By the Giants. Right. There have been 22 since this park opened in 2000. 20 have been hit by Barry Bonds. And, of course, Felipe Crespo hit the other two. You got it. Who else would it be? Of course. Another 2-2 pitch from Russ Ortiz with one out. Edmonds tries to go the other way, sends Bonds back, and that is gone. Home run, Jim Edmonds, and a 4-1 to St. Louis fifth inning lead. Nearly got one out down the right field line, went the other way to get his first home run of this series. 
Earlier we talked about how the ball carries to left field, left center. Jim Edmonds, a very good high fastball hitter. So it would stand to reason that he would have good hacks at a guy like Ortiz who throws a high fastball. Edmonds gets a high fastball right on the sweet spot and drives it out of here. Just did carry over the wall and now Dave Regan. After that reaction from the Cardinal dugout and that from the Giants dugout, that range of emotion, Dave Rigetti is going to go out and talk as action starts for the Giants out in their bullpen. It's a three-run St. Louis lead in the fifth. Our RadioShack.com trivia question, which player the most RBIs in a single postseason? Huh? Huh? Anyone? Huh? 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 Tim? No? I, I yes. don't know. Sandy oh. Alomar Jr. back in 97. At 19 RBIs, wasn't that the year that he took Rivera deep? Right, for the two-run home run to tie it, or to put Cleveland ahead in the bottom of the eighth inning in game four. And then Alomar won it with a base hit in game five. Our sprint virtual manager question, should Dusty Baker pull Ramon Russell Ortiz, rather? Aaron Fultz getting ready. And Ortiz, a big difference between Ortiz in this game compared to what we saw, and you and I did the game, game five in the division series. He's been able to get to two strikes, but trying to make that good out pitch just hasn't been close enough for the Cardinals to even offer at. It's interesting. Uh, he hasn't fallen behind that many Cardinal batters. Three, three, two counts. But it has been finishing off the Cardinals. That has been his problem. Fell behind Pujols 2 0. Oh, now it's 2 and 1. So Fultz gets loose, and Ortiz tries to navigate through the fifth. 2 and 2. That sprint virtual manager question. We'll have that answer for you in a moment as Kerry Robinson. Helping out Cannon Kyle. Cannon Kyle's done his part thus far. Trying to get Cannon to adhere to Major League Baseball rules. Down in the dugout as the count goes full. You can log on for these questions using FoxSports.com or using PCS Vision from Sprint, and the answer is yes. And it may happen right away if Ortiz can't get Albert Pujols with the lefty Drew on deck. That will find the seats. Tino Martinez after Drew. How funny was it? Might have been the, uh, a time to really laugh when a manager was booed because there was such sentiment in this stadium for Ken and Kyle, a very sophisticated crowd here at Pac Bell. They knew, uh, and, and they stood for a couple minutes when Cannon was introduced. Immediately after him, Tony La Russa was introduced and booze and I think even Tony laughed about it. Here's a 3-2 pitch. Pujols pops it up. Shallow right center and Reggie Sanders wants it and has it. Two out. <laughs> this is Matheny's home run. Gigap. And the same fan on the Edmonds home run. Gigup. Like a frog off a, a lily pad. He needs a milk cart. That's what he needs. With two out, J.D. Drew takes ball one low. Would you be willing to give up one of your milk cartons that we could send out to that guy? Out Absolutely. Out I would. I would. I mean, you'd make another one. Finish your half gallon of milk, make another glove. Here's a 1-0 pitch to Drew with two out. It's easy. If you can't bring your glove, bring a half gallon of milk yeah. to a game. <laughs> two balls, no strikes. <laughs> 
With two out, J.D. Drew takes ball three. There's a glove there. Yeah. Guy stunned behind him. <laughs> How could you not catch those two? I think he's got headphones on. <laughs> <laughs> Listening to the Grateful right. Dead. Yo there's, a, yo, there's a game going on. Hello. <laughs> Roll away with you. Roll away with you. Through lines one into right, a two out base hit. And the inning will continue for Tino Martinez, but not for Russ Ortiz. Dusty Baker will make the switch and Ortiz who's a big reason why the Giants are in the NLCS winning games one and five in Atlanta in the division series is knocked out in the fifth Fultz takes over for the Giants with the Cardinals up by three Fultz takes over for San Francisco There's a little roll away for you. Yeah. All right. Good call. You can't come to San Francisco and not think of the dead. Tell you Or Here's, John Lee Hooker. No, yeah. Absolutely. That's what Dusty Baker likes to listen to before games. Boz Skaggs. Huey Lewis. Huey and the news. Chris Isaac, who sang the Star Spangled Banner before the game. The numbers for Fultz during the regular season. Pitching with a runner at first, Drew. Two out. Tino Martinez, who's lined out, grounded out, pops it up. Left side, it'll stay in play. Tough play for Bell, and he makes it. That'll do it for St. Louis in the fifth. A one out home run by Jim Edmonds. Two hits in the inning. And one left. Ring like fire when you do to me. Four to one. The League Championship Series on Fox is brought to you by Chevy Trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. By WebMD, the place America comes for health care answers. And by MasterCard. There are some things money can't buy. For everything else, there's MasterCard. Gorgeous day weather-wise in San Francisco and up above. Coverage from on high is provided by the Saturn light ship. Keep your eye on the sky when the light ship visits a major sporting event near you. Wow. Here's Aurelia. And Chuck Finley misses up and away with ball one good time for the Giants to get something going with Aurelia Kent and Bonds if anybody gets on Santiago before a crowd of 42,177 Aurelia the only RBI of the day for San Francisco Giants drawing over three and a quarter million people this year the most in the National League That's right side and out of play. And doing that, Tim, with a relatively speaking smaller ballpark, 42,000. They get a lot of standing room only fans that walk that concourse area out beyond the right field wall. But this is this is the prettiest stadium, I think, in the big leagues. And I said to a couple of the players, they don't even understand how pretty this ballpark is because they never get off the floor of this place. Yeah, you can't uh, look at it from our view. McCovey Cove. Spectacular. The 1-1 pitch. Aurelia fights it off, fouls it off, strike two. This ballpark also made economic sense. Privately funded. In this day and age, privately funded ballpark sitting on only 12 and a half acres only fin Fenway Park Wrigley Field comparable space but just 12 and a half acres think of the new ballparks that's not a lot a one-two pitch Aurelia laid off two and two 
economically feasible because real estate is very high in San Francisco, as most know. This whole area being refurbished, renovated, it is spectacular. Aurelia first up, trying to get on in front of Kent. 2-2 two -two pitch. Full count. On top of that, there's an air show going on. So we will see some of that as we go along here in the late afternoon in San Francisco. Blue Angels are here. Aurelia looking for a strike. Takes a walk. Our in-game box score for the Giants, sponsored by Chevy Trucks. Kenny Lofton hitless today. Aurelia has the sack fly. In fact, he sacrificed twice and now walked. Kent has a hit. Bell has the run. He's one for one with a walk. And here is Kent who could tighten this game up with one swing of the bat, one for two this afternoon. ball for strike one that's been a good pitch today for Chuck Finley it really has something other than the fastball and the splitter he struck Santiago out with that pitch and gets ahead of Kent Finley got around to lead off walk last inning but that was with a pitcher coming up now a leadoff walk to Aurelia with Jeff Kent at the plate one ball, one strike. We were saying the other night, half in jest, that if you have a minor league pitcher and you're bringing him up, one of the first things that you would tell him is to never walk the leadoff hitter. It seems like they always score. After Kent, it's Bonds. Thirty seven home runs during the regular season for Kent, none in the postseason. Base hit, two on with Bonds coming up. The last time Barry Bonds was up, it took two pitches to get him out. You don't see that often. But the fastball low, and then the fastball on the hands. Bonds got under it. Another chance for Barry Bonds. The whole world was talking about Bonds and his failures in the postseason. A big reason why the Giants are here, getting past Atlanta. And now a chance for him representing the tying run at the plate in the fifth inning of game three. Ball one.
yet another splashdown. Santiago. Marrero gets it back in and the go ahead run is on. To a young pitcher, never walk the leadoff batter. A walk, a single, a three run home run. Now Santiago is on with Reggie Sanders coming to the plate. 0 for 10 in this series. Sanders gets underneath it, and that'll be a tester. Pujols and it's Pujols who has it. Not an easy play for the first out of the inning. That's an excellent play on the part of Pujols and the Cardinals outfielders and infielders. There is no question they are having a tough time with the glare here at Pac Bell. Renteria fortunately not hurt but watch how Edgar gets behind Pujols and fortunately in falling backwards Pujols did not, does not do more damage. Now it's JT Snow. One for two this afternoon with a single his first time up. Strike one. strike on snow hit and run and snow pokes it foul Dave Beers getting loose for St. Louis in their bullpen. That's an emergency swing that Snow had against Finley with Santiago running. Ball out of the strike zone away. And watch the reach with the rear end out by Snow. Here's a 1-2. Martinez. Down to second, back to first. Three, six, three, double play. Well, they said he didn't come up big in the postseason. He came in with one career postseason home run. Now he has five, four this year, and first for Barry Bonds in NLCS play. With that, we go to the sixth. And a kiss for his son, Nikolai as Barry delivers for the Giants again, 4-4 after five. The League Championship Series on Fox is brought to you by Sprint, introducing PCS Vision, clearly a whole new way to look at wireless. Barry Bonds gives you a whole new way to look at home run hitters. 
the age of 38, doing things he would think would be unimaginable, hitting 370 during the regular season, walking 198 times, still driving in 110 runs, and taking Chuck Finley on a pitch up and in, out of the park, into McCovey Cove to make it 4-4 as we go to the sixth. Jay Watasik is the new pitcher for San Francisco, and Eli Marrero's first up. Hitless today, one out of six in this series. And he rockets one into left field. Back at the track, at the wall, the Cardinals are back on top. It's 5-4 on a home run by Eli Marrero. So a feisty greeting by the Cardinals and Marrero for Jay Watase. The second pitch, boom. Marrero had 18 home runs during the season. 17 of those against right-handed pitching. Here he puts the Cardinals back on top. The ball ends up back on the field after Marrero did this. Hey, Joe, that swing looked like Eli was cheating a little bit on the inside fastball, looking for it, and he got it. Sometimes you look for it, and you try to hit it out. It looked like he was looking for it and got it and did the job. Matheny's homer today. He chops one to short. Now really has to back up. Perfect throw, one out. Well, Tony La Russa made the lineup changes prior to this game three. Putting Edgar Renneri in the number two spot. He has a deep fly ball for a sack fly. Putting Drew in the number five spot. He's walked and singled. And Morero getting the start to get a little extra pop. He homers to put St. Louis on top. And now Mike DeFelice is going to come off the bench and bat for Chuck Finley. Finley pitched well in the, in the division series in game two. In Arizona did not get the victory. But gave the Cardinals a chance to win it against Kurt Schilling. And now Finley will exit with the Cardinals up 5-4 in the sixth inning. And De Felice will walk to the plate as the pinch hitter. Sometimes with certain hitters up there, a catcher can see the hands and the feet from behind. The one thing he can't see are his eyes. And that shot looked like Marrero was looking for the fastball inside, inside part of the plate. He got it and did some damage. Right here. It's just the body language. Open stance. Rarely do you see a guy going up, looking to hit a ball out of the ballpark and doing it, but Eli appeared to me that that's what happened then. Latasic got in front of DeFelice, one of three catchers on the roster. Marrero and Matheny, the other two for Tony La Russa. It's 0-2. Check swing, grounder to Bell. True hop, good throw, two out. Go to MLB.com to bid on special autographed and game-used items currently up for auction to benefit the September 11 disaster relief fund. MLB.com. You can get game used mm -hmm. items. We're in the sixth inning of game three. Watasik is on the hook. He's former Cardinal property. Jay Watasik. Eli Marrero has homered, and now Vina batting with two out and nobody on. Felix Rodriguez getting loose. You remember game three of the division series. Dusty Baker took all kinds of heat for bringing Manny Ibar into the game. With the bases loaded, Castilla and Lockhart went back to back on back to back pitches, a base hit and a home run. And the Braves were on their way to a 10 2 victory. It's Wittasic out of the bullpen for the first time in this series. In the sixth inning, game three, tie game. 
And it's Watasik who gives up the home run to Eli Marrero to put St. Louis on top. The difference there is that Watasik was a guy on whom the Giants depended all year. Manny Ibar wasn't. Ibar called up for the last month and a half. Plus, there were men on base when he came in, and he didn't start the inning. Pena took it just outside. Two close pitches, and the Giants don't get the call. It's two and two. Breaking ball that went around the plate. Close. Out of play for David Bell. And the inning is over. Lead off, home run, Eli Marrero against Jay Watasek. St. Louis back on top, bottom of the sixth inning. Dave Beers will take over for the Cardinals. 5-4 St. Louis. David Bell first up for San Francisco. Then a pinch hitter on deck. And Kenny Lofton against Dave Beers. Cardinals lead. 5-4 as a strike is in at the knees to David Bell. Beers, the former closer for the Cardinals, gave up that job when the Cardinals signed Isringhausen over the offseason as a free agent. One ball, one strike. You wonder as we play here in the sixth inning of a one-run game if the short bench that Tony La Russa has to work with in this series because of the presence of Roland will come back to haunt St. Louis. The 1-1. One, one. That's foul. Strike two on Bell, who's been on base twice today. Mike DeFelice has already been used. There's Scott Rowland. In all probability, will not be ready to play before the weekend's up. Outside chance next Wednesday if it goes to a game six. Fans are watching the Blue Angels overhead. Beers is concentrating on Bell. A 1-2 pitch. One out. So Bell is retired for the first time today. And we remind you that tonight, October's magical matchups continue with the second half of our LCS doubleheader. Game four between the Twins and the Angels. It'll be Brad Radke against John Lackey. All part of a full weekend of magical matchups. Football will be on the slate tomorrow as well as baseball. That all takes center stage only on Fox. Game four right after this one. The Giants had Sean Dunstan in the on-deck circle. Now they pulled Dunstan back. Pedro Feliz will make his first appearance of this LCS. I think the reason they pulled him back, if David Bell gets on, Dunstan's up there to bunt. Feliz with uh, a bit more pop. I guess that's uh, what Dusty's thinking was right there. A 1-0 pitch. Feliz pops it into center field. Edmonds back on the track at the wall. To pull it in 399 feet away. Two out. We talked about it earlier. The ball in center and left carries, carries, carries. Not quite far enough for the Giants to tie it. So with two out, nobody on, here's Kenny Lofton. Go on, Kenny. And a bunt. Matheny, it's a fair ball, and the inning is over. Lofton, with a look back at the home plate umpire, Dale Scott. Scott called it a fair ball. No argument from the giant dugout. And a 1-2-3 sixth inning for Veers. Cardinals lead by one. Back after this from your local Fox station.
Felix Rodriguez is the new pitcher for San Francisco. The numbers, I think, Tim, are a bit misleading. You see an ERA of 4.17, a record. You see six losses on the record. But this is a guy who, as the season has worn on and now the postseason has picked up, he just seems to be getting better and better. He became angry earlier in the year, and we talked about uh, use your left hand. He pounded that uh, right hand against a, a wall in the dugout. It hurt enough. Not enough to put him on the DL, but enough to affect his performance. And he was dropping his arm down earlier. That's one of the earlier in the year. That's one of the worst things a pitcher could do because he gets under the ball and pushes it toward home plate. Now he's on top of the ball and throwing it and throwing it hard. Renneria pops it up foul. It's behind home plate and into the seats. Our sprint. Virtual manager question is something that we brought up last half inning. Will the short bench be an issue for St. Louis? It may be before the end of this game. One run game, seventh inning. Tony La Russa now has only three left over there. Robinson, Eduardo Perez, and Miguel Cairo consider Roland unusable, and that is the case with Scott Roland. They hope maybe he could play on Monday if this series goes that far. We have a little break in the action I believe because they're waiting for a flyby from the Blue Angels. So instead of it being in mid pitch here it comes in the seventh. Cameras are looking for it. The umpires are looking for it. They said 345. The scoreboard clock says 344. So the Blue Angels get another minute according to the scoreboard here at Packwell Park. Here it is. down by the water watching the Blue Angels yesterday it's just staggering how close they are the speed with which they move through the air it's amazing as Renneria fouls one back and out of play one and two talk about synchronicity oh. Oof. So that was the delay and here's how close they look from underneath. Here's a one two to Renteria two balls two strikes from Rodriguez. Edmonds and Pujols will follow as the Cardinals will try to add to what is a 5-4 seventh inning lead. Rodriguez the fourth pitcher of the day for the Giants. Our sprint virtual manager question and the answer 63 percent believe that Tony La Russa will have his hands tied later in this game because now he's left with only three position players on his bench. If the Cardinals relievers do the job that they've done in the first two games, he won't need that bench. But he is short. 2-2 Two -two pitch. During the summer, shadows do not present a problem at this hour. But with the mid-October sun, they could present a problem to a team trying to play catch up as the Giants are trying to do. Renteria in a battle with Felix Rodriguez. Part of the order will bat for the Giants in the bottom of the seventh. Cardinals one more breathing room. Another foul and Renneria is in battle mode here just short little swing trying to make contact. 
perhaps the toughest play, Joe, when you look at it because of the light standard shadow around second base on a short pop fly in right center field, somewhere in this area. Perhaps a second baseman going back for a ball, going from the shadows to the sun, maybe back to the sun. It would be reasonable to assume that it would be a problem for a guy like Jeff Kent or Fernando Vina with the Cardinals. Here's a 2-2. Full count. Giants had a lead after two. Cardinals took the lead in the third. Led by three until a Barry Bonds three-run home run in the fifth. Renteria shoots one into left center field. Lofton is there, one out. Our game summary is brought to you by Nissan. From the top of the seventh inning, Barry Bonds with a gargantuan blast into McCovey Cove beyond the right field wall, tied the game in the fifth, tying a Giants record with his fourth home run this postseason. Marrero broke the tie with a home run in the sixth inning off Watasik. Matheny, his first career postseason home run and first since late April. And the Giants have four straight postseason wins. They've never won five straight. This franchise has it. As they try to go up three games to none, Cardinals trying to give themselves a chance tomorrow to tie the series. With one out, Edmonds. Back in the fifth. Went the other way. Behind on the count here, 0-1. Twenty eight home runs during the regular season. That was his second of the postseason. Hit one off Randy Johnson in game one of the division series. Oh, and two. That helped set the tone for the Cardinals against the Diamondbacks beating them three in a row. But they have had their hands full with the Giants. As have a lot of teams over the last month and a half. Giants winning their last eight games. We said it the other night. Twenty five of their last thirty three. Beat the Braves in five, and the first two against the Cardinals. And 0 2. Not close. Aurelia, Kent, and Bonds will bat in the bottom of the inning. A postseason slugging percentage of 716. Joining Ruth, Gehrig, and Aaron. But one out, one ball, two strikes on Edmonds. Fighting it off. The starters are gone. Russ Ortiz lasted four and two-thirds. Chuck Finley lasted five. So now instead of comparing starters, you compare relievers. Dave Beers for the Cardinals, a guy who relies on deception. There is no deception with Felix Rodriguez. No. Look at his body action when he lets go of the pitch. He throws everything he's got behind his fastball. He's got Edmonds set up at a ball and two strikes. Two out. When you can put a fastball that hard in that location, you don't need deception. what Joe was talking about. Looks like he's releasing an anvil when he throws it home. Converted catcher. Here's Albert Pujols with the bases empty, two out. Pujols has doubled, walked, and flied out. Strike one.
The breaking ball velocity from Rodriguez is about what Veers throws with his fastball, 89 miles per hour. He could get that slider up to 91, 92. Doesn't get the corner, one ball, one strike. But a lot of hitters, when they talk about pitchers like Rodriguez, how does the ball feel off the bat? It's very, very important. And when you hit against a guy like Rodriguez, it's heavy off the bat. Even when you center it, there's a clang, there's a reverber uh, reverberation in the bat. Albert Pujols with a line drive to left, right at Barry Bonds, and the inning comes to a close. The big bats coming up for the Giants. Time to stretch in San Francisco. Bonds do up third, Giants down by one. The League Championship Series on Fox is brought to you by Budweiser, delivering beer at its best with the crisp, clean, and refreshing taste known only to the king of beers. Fog settling in around the Golden Gate Bridge, and Dusty Baker settles in in his office and listens to a little John Lee Hooker before the game. It brings him luck, and John Lee Hooker provides the accompaniment with our Pepsi fan camp. Boom, 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 boom. Gonna shoot you right down at all your feet. Take you home with me. In my house. Boom, 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 boom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love to see you walk. We've been down the floor. You talk to me. That baby talk. I like it like that. You talk like that. You knock me dead. That all my feet. Ow, 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 ow. A little boom, boom, boom from BB Barry Bonds in this game. Bottom of the fifth inning, a three run home run to tie the game. It's now the Cardinals on top 5 4 as we go to the bottom of the seventh, and Bonds is due up third in this inning. Rich Aurelia first up. Sacrifice bunt, sacrifice fly, a walk, and a run scored. That's right, aside from the Blue Angels, the biggest boom, 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 boom today was the three-run home run from Bond. Aurelia's walk started the rally for the Giants in the fifth, the patient at bat. Drew it against Chuck Finley, then Kent pulled a base hit through the left side. And Bonds pulled a home run into McCovey Cove in right. Ball one with Steve Klein getting ready for the Cardinals out in their bullpen here in the seventh. Got to figure one way or the other. Steve Klein's going to pitch to Barry Bonds this inning. Nobody on with one out, with two out. Doesn't matter. Two balls, no strikes on Aurelia. Aurelia, two home runs in this series, goes deep to center. Back is Edmonds. Off the wall. Aurelia, a leadoff. With most outfielders, all you have to do is wait for them to turn toward the fence to make sure that the ball's over their heads. But Edmonds has made so many over-the-shoulder catches, you really can't tell with him. Aurelia with a double represents the potential time run here in the seventh. I am really surprised Pujols at third and Martinez at first are up. No way Kent's going to be bunting here.
Pujols, even with the bag at third, Martinez in front of the bag at first base. Kent can drive the ball to right field on the ground, too. They should be back three steps. Bonds waiting on deck. Homer his last time up. Kent two hits in this game. The Giants took an early lead in the second. The Cardinals scored in the third, fourth, fifth, sixth. Lead at 5-4, game three. Giants up two games to none. Dangerous pitch, and Kent fouled it back. One ball, one strike. Boy, was that ever a hanger. You could see Matheny setting up outside. That was a hanger. Kent missed it. A 1-1 to Kent. Right down the middle, strike two. We talked about the shadows earlier. And usually Jeff Kent does not take a pitch like that. Almost startled him. Kent on one and two takes ball two. Kent makes it out here and does not advance the runner Aurelia first base will be open when Barry Bonds comes to the plate but Bonds will represent the go ahead run here in the seventh yeah, that would probably be the uh, and I thought about it right after I said it that'd be the only reason that Steve Klein does not come in the game if first base is open here's a 2 2 one out and here's that situation big strikeout for fears as he gets Kent Gets Kent without Jeff advancing the runner. The fork ball, and Kent swings over it. Here comes the intentional pass. Remember the last time Bonds came up, it was against the lefty Finley. And I think it'd be pretty safe to say, Tim, that the left-hander didn't bother Barry Bonds. Not the last time up he did. This will be ball three. It'll set up a two-on, one-out situation for Benito Santiago. Who grounded into 19 double plays this year. Bonds drew 68 intentional passes during the regular season. 23 more than Willie McCovey did in, in 1969. Bonds' three-run shot to tie it his last time up. Now Dave Duncan is out to the mound to talk to Dave Veers as Klein stops throwing. And it's going to be Veers against Santiago. And yet another chance for the guy batting behind Barry Bonds to do the damage. A hit today for Benito. One out of three and four out of 12 in the series. With a four RBI game in game one. A jam shot that gets under the glove of Veers. Vina throws safe at first and the bases are loaded. Vina was going to cover second base, intending for a throw from Veers. When that didn't happen, he had to recover, go back toward first. Certainly not Vina's fault. Veers has got to come up with this ball. It's an easy double play. You can see Vina in the background going towards second. He has to reverse courses and does not get the call at first. 
I'm a little surprised that Vigneault was covering. You hear that a lot. Who's going to cover on the play? And Renteria covered, even though Santiago is a right-handed batter. That was a very, very close play. But if Renteria covers on the play, Vigneault gets at least one out. Santiago hits a lot of ground balls the other way. I'm very surprised that Vigneault was covering on that play. It's a base hit for Santiago, who did go in hand first in the first base bag. But again, hustle, a part of the equation for Santiago, did not take anything for granted. And that loads the bases with only one out for Reggie Sanders, who would like to pick right now to get his first hit of the series. One more look where well, he could have been out. Depends on where the ball and the glove was. Martinez plants a very close play. He's safe. Proper call made by Jeff Kellogg, the first base umpire. Santiago is safe. The bases are loaded on a double, an intentional walk, and what was ruled an infield hit for Santiago strike one on Sanders a hit could give the Giants the lead Matheny out to block it as good a blocker of balls in the dirt as I've ever seen Had a chance for the bases loaded in the first and flied out to center. Sanders backed up at a ball and two strikes. So Beers can go one of two ways. He can go with the high fastball again. Remember we said Sanders a good low ball hitter, but he does chase balls in the dirt with two strikes. Anything other than those two pitches, he won't see right now. Fastball splitter. Time called at the plate. Well, you've got Sanders up now and the left-handed hitting J.T. Snow on deck. Joe, I, I can well imagine what Matheny and Beers are talking about right there. They've got to be sure. If you're going to go with the high fastball, you're going for the strikeout. If you go with the splitter, you're going for the double play. On the other hand, Reggie Sanders is a good low ball hitter. The splitter to be effective has got to be down. Two out. High fastball from Veers and Sanders is now 0 for 12 in this series. I think that's the right call in that situation, not because of the, of the result, but percentages are in your favor for the strikeout as opposed to the double play ball. Just misses it. May have gotten a piece of that. Well, that strikeout will be the end of the day for Dave Veers. And it's going to be Steve Klein coming out of the bullpen for St. Louis. J.T. Snow, the scheduled hitter for San Francisco. Cardinals clinging to a one-run seventh inning lead. Fernando Vina on that play is going to move here as Renteria holds his ground. The ball, on the other hand, goes under the glove of Beers. But you can see Renter or Vina has to recover to go back this way and does not get the call at first base. A very close play, but Vina not at fault there. And now Steve Klein, a very excitable left-hander, will come into the action here and face J.T. Snow. Bases loaded, two out, 5-4, bottom of the seventh. St. Louis on top. And Klein starts with strike one. Snow thought it was high. 
Matheny sitting inside. Borderline pitch. A double, an intentional walk, and a single in the inning. To the right side for Vina. Has to wait for Martinez, and the Giants now have left the bases loaded again. We go to the eighth. St. Louis leads it 5-4. The San Francisco Bell making its way through San Francisco Bay and inside this stadium sits right on it. A terrific game three. And I mean, I say terrific because we've seen just about everything. We've seen a dramatic home run by Barry Bonds. We've seen Matheny. Marrero and Edmonds all go deep for St. Louis as Drew takes a strike from Scott Ayer, the new pitcher. And then these defensive plays that are just crazy at this time of year. This has been a game filled with them. Cardinals back to back in the first and second inning with some of the most confusing defense we've seen in some time. And here they are with a one run lead. And even on the other side, the Cardinals first rally started on a strikeout and a wild pitch. And a misplayed ball in center by Lofton that went for a double. The numbers for Scott Ayer during the regular season. We've seen a boat sinking out in the bay that the Coast Guard had to help as Drew is reaching for it, pops it into center. Kenny Lofton is there, one out. A mistake by. Renteria to start the day. Vina not covering the bag. Vina trying to do too much after that. And Edmonds making some Creskin catch out in the outfield. Finley not covering the line on the bunt. Vina and Drew coming together. And yet through all that, in a game the Cardinals can't afford to lose, they lead 5-4 in the eighth in San Francisco. One out, nobody on. Here's Tino Martinez. 0 for 3 today. Strike one. Not nearly as blatant the play by Dave Beers. If Dave stays down on the ball, they have a double play to end the inning. And that did load it up, but they got the strikeout of Reggie Sanders and Steve Klein got JT Snow on a ground ball to end the inning. One out, nobody on. Martinez takes it low. Maybe the biggest contribution that Tino Martinez has made in today's game, and I say this seriously, not trying to be smart about it, was digging the ball out of the dirt on that throw from Vina on the ball hit by Santiago. Getting the ball on a short hop. If that ball skips past Martinez, the Giants are on top here in the eighth. That's right, and it could be worse. This is what Joe is talking about. Santiago diving and Martinez even though that did not get the out he kept it from getting past him and Beers struck out Sanders and Klein got snow on the grounder here's a 2-1 to Martinez popped up playable for JT snow in foul territory Martinez and his frustration continues two out Back to the play that we talk about. Benito Santiago did get his hand on the bag before the glove closed around the ball on the throw from Vina. And Veers got the strikeout. Tell Steve you, Joe, Klein came in to end the inning. If I could uh, tell a young pitcher about where to tie up a left-handed hitter from a left-handed pitcher, that is an ideal pitch. It's just inside. It's just high. But watch, watch what Martinez has to do in order to make contact. He's trying to pull the hands in. He's trying to get the good part of the bat on the ball and does neither. So with two out, nobody on, and Marrero coming up, we ask you again, what did you decide? What is the most memorable moment in Major League Baseball history? Tune in to the pregame show prior to game four of the World Series to see the winner of the MasterCard Presents Major League Baseball's most memorable moment.
Live on Fox 8 Eastern on Wednesday October 23rd. Here is Marrero and a chopper to Bell had a tough time with the sun. Low throw and out at first as Snow dug it out on the other end. Bell a tough time seeing it. No time to put the glasses down. Made the stop. The low throw and JT Snow on the other end. A 1 2 3 8 for Scott Air. The League Championship Series on Fox is brought to you by T Mobile. Get more minutes, more features, more service. By Pepsi Blue, the new fusion of berry and cola. It's the mix. And by Nissan and your Nissan dealer. Live shots of San Francisco. You can see the fog rolling in. This beautiful city as we move to the bottom of the eighth. And the Giants bat down by one. 5-4 St. Louis, game three. NLCS with the Giants up two games to none. David Bell against Steve Klein. And ball one. I think what Tony La is thinking right now, Bell batting eighth. You have Steve Klein pitch to Bell. And then Dusty Baker could announce the right-hander, and that's when you bring the right-hander, Rick White, in to pitch to Tom Goodwin. Bell floats one in the center, and David Bell is on base again. Third time he's done that, and it comes here leading off the eighth. And that's the problem when you try to get through the leadoff batter. La Russa was going to take him out if he got Bell out, because that way you would waste another player, and it would be Sean Dunstan. Now Dunstan up there to bunt off the end of the bat. A little flare to center to start the Giants eighth. Now you leave the right-handed Dunstan in there because Lofton's on deck. So you got Klein pitching to Lofton if the bunt's successful. Coming up after this game, game four of the ALCS, the Twins and the Angels with Anaheim up two games to one. San Francisco's up two games to none. Down by one in the bottom of the eighth. Longtime Cub, former Cardinal, Sean Dunstan up with a bunt, hard and foul. Come on, Sean. Talk about pinch hitting and how difficult that is. Pinch bunting can be at least as difficult. Saw that graphic. Last inning, it was a leadoff double by Aurelia. With Kent and Bonds coming up, Santiago, Sanders, and the Giants did not score. They've only played at the leadoff runner once this afternoon. Uh, hit by Bell. And an 0 1 to Dunstan. Out at first. Sacrifice good 1 4. Down to second. The tying run, David Bell. That ball caroming off the plate in the high bounce before Martinez gets it. Calculated risk going to second base, but there's just too much to do. When a team is bunting to tie in the late innings, you make sure of the one out. Another reason why Klein was left on the mound to start this inning is the presence of Kenny Lofton, who stands in. The Giants need a hit out of Lofton, who is hitless today. Off the plate, Klein, two out. Kenny Lofton does not have a hit since he took exception to that pitch up and in in game one. 0 for 9 since then. Make that 0 for 10 since then. A slider on the outside corner. And an easy play for Klein. Might say, why didn't David Bell go to third on that ball? It's very difficult 
if you're on at second base to see exactly where that ball is. They're just waiting right here. That's what David Bell did. He took a couple of steps and then thought, no, not worth the risk. And here comes Tony La Russa. Rick White is coming in the game. A leadoff hit, the good bunt by Dunstan. Lofton made the out, runner at second, two gone. Giants down by one. Can and Kyle, whose father Daryl passed away this summer, was brought in to help energize this Cardinal team. And we mentioned at the beginning of the day that Cannon's mother, Flynn, told him before he got here, look, Go around to as many of the Cardinal players as you can find and tell them, don't give up. Remind them of what your dad told all these players when he was, and he was, the leader of this team in his years with the Cardinals. Well, young Cannon was talking with Scott Rowland earlier in the day, and they weren't talking about such serious things. Maybe they changed it though. Maybe when you turn 60, you'll be able to drive. No? 16 still. So that's been part of the day for Cannon Kyle, who's beginning kindergarten. And we'll have some interesting stories to tell about his day in San Francisco at game three of this league championship series. How will it turn out? It's up to the bullpens now, and right at this moment, Rick White for St. Louis. Tying run at second, two out, David Bell started the inning with a hit. Rich Aurelia. Tough on Cardinal pitching all day long. Strike one. For the last four pitches before the pitch is made, Eli Marrero, the left fielder, has put his glove up around cap level. It has got to be very, very difficult to see if you're in left field. We saw it with David Bell the last half inning at third base. Marrero's got the glasses flipped up, that eye black on, hat pulled down low. Here's an 0-1 pitch to Aurelia, trying to tie it with a hit. That's on the outside corner 0-2. And Aurelia spins out of there, upset that this was called strike two from Dale Scott. After the fastball, the slider. Sometimes a pitcher will catch your front corner with that pitch. A catcher catches it four inches outside. Good pitch from White. Tying run at second with two out. Eighth inning, game three. 5-4 St. Louis, and White tries to go a little farther outside. Rick White, who was picked up a couple of years ago at the trading deadline by the Mets, the Tampa Bay Devil Rays, was picked up after being released by Colorado. And he's been a big part of this Cardinal bullpen ever since. 1-2 pitch to third. Pujols, low but out, and the inning is over. Albert Pujols is checked on for the first time today. Moving into the infield, and this game goes to inning number nine, game three, 5-4, St. Louis. By the East Bay, and in particular, McCovey Cove. And in full view of sailboats, Near and far, tankers as well as this ballpark. We're inside, we move to the ninth inning of game three. Cardinals desperately trying to hang on to this lead in this game and their hope in this National League Championship Series. Tim Worrell takes over, and Matheny pops up the first pitch. J.T. Snow wants it, has it one out. Tim Worrell has been an outstanding setup reliever for Dusty Baker this season. 
Tim's dad was in the Giants clubhouse tonight before the game. Proud father of two excellent major league pitchers. We talked about him the other night, Todd Worrell. Now Tim doing such a good job trying to hold it for the Giants so Bonds makes a different a difference in the bottom of the ninth inning. Bonds is due up second. And whether the Cardinals elect to pitch around him or if they pitch to him, has got to be nothing but drama. Eduardo Perez, who has a pinch hit home run in this series, trying to deliver again for Tony LaRusa. Isringhausen getting loose. Isringhausen needs more and more time now to get loose. He's got a trouble spot in his pitching shoulder. So it takes him about three times as long to get ready for a ninth inning as he used to as Eduardo Perez takes ball one up and away. Game two, eighth inning against Schmidt. About the only solid contact the Cardinals had that entire night against the dominant pitching of Jason Schmidt. Two balls, no strikes on Perez. I saw Eduardo before the game and I said low fastball from Jason the other night. Smile lit up from ear to ear. Game four of the ALCS coming up right after this game. The Twins at the Angels. Perez with four pinch hit home runs this season for the Cardinals. That's into right. It'll play. JT Snow wants it. It's called off by Kent. Fair ball. Two out. Two pop ups. And Vino will be the hitter with the bases empty. We have a shot at a rather exciting bottom of the ninth. Oh inning. man, I'll say. I should say. Kent, Bonds, Santiago. And right now it appears it'll be a one run St. Louis lead for Jason Isringhausen. As we show him in the bullpen, that warm up pitch gets away. Ball one high to Vina. Rancheria would follow. Vina has been on base once. Has two hits in this series. That's it. Nice play by J.T. Snow. Inning over. What a play. Taking a hit away from Vina and sending us into the bottom of the ninth inning in game three of the 2002 NLCS. Who's coming up? Who else? Kent, Bonds, Santiago. 5-4, St. Louis. Part of the order for the Giants in game three. Bottom of the ninth inning and St. Louis on top by one. Jason Isringhausen from Brighton, Illinois, grew up rooting for the Cardinals. The former Oakland Athletic brought to St. Louis in a four-year, $27 million contract. Every penny of it for situations like this. One run lead, down two games to none against Kent Bonds and Santiago. Kent two hits today no home runs this postseason 37 during the regular year. Nasty pitch one ball one strike. Cut fastball on the outside corner. You could see Matheny setting away. That's where he got it. You can even see the ride on the last several feet of that pitch. For the most part Isringhausen a two pitch pitcher Boy, those two pitches are strong. The knuckle curve and the fastball. The 1-1. One, one. 
Good pitch again. One ball, two strikes. Same pitch selection. Cut fastball. Still one and two. We have a guy at the plate who has hit 37 home runs this season, followed by the single season home run king, Barry Bonds. Isringhausen has not allowed a home run since August of 2001. Side foul ball just out of play. Breaking ball from Isringhausen. After four straight fastballs, Kent gets this knuckle curve for one out. By getting Jeff Kent, you bring Barry Bonds to the plate and a spot where the best he can do is tie the game. Tony La Russa telling us before the game that with that situation in the right shoulder of Isringhausen and he may get some work done over the offseason it's cut his velocity down a bit but it's made him more of a pitcher instead of trying to blow it by everybody at 97. Strike one from Isringhausen. Before that pitch you saw Tony La Russa getting the attention of Edgar Renteria the shortstop who was playing on the left side of second base. He moved him over for the shift. 0 for 11 in his career against Isringhausen. Bonds takes ball one. I think the Cardinal thinking is right right here. It's a, it's a different situation than if it were a tie game. When you need a home run to tie, I think you pitch to him. strike riding fastball bonds ahead on the count two balls one strike one out nobody on San Francisco down by one in the ninth three balls and a strike you used to pitching around Bond so many times that often you don't get a close pitch. An umpire will guess ball. That's ball four, and the tying run is on. A strikeout followed by a walk. And now a visit from Dave Duncan. Look at the sequence on Barry Bonds from Jason Isringhausen. That was a backdoor breaking ball starting off. Then the knuckle curve misses. Fastball way inside with the count two and one, a very close fastball. And he misses with a very close breaking ball. Gene Klein's the hitting instructor for the Giants talked about the change in Santiago a guy who hit 278 during the regular season 16 home runs. They said the biggest change in Benito is that he will go up the middle and go into right center field more now than ever. The Cardinals haven't played that way.
strike one from Isringhausen. Tying run at first, one out here in the bottom of the ninth. Good idea what you just said because the right hander is not going to pull Isringhausen anyway. Santiago wouldn't chase it. One and one. Unless you have the whole right side of the diamond open with Vina cheating for the double play. And Tino Martinez holding Bonds on at first. Bonds 0 for 11 against Isringhausen. Santiago 4 out of 9 against the Cardinal right-hander. Bonds is running. Santiago fouls it back. Strike two. Dusty Baker putting the hit and run on here. A gutsy move. And Santiago had a pitch to handle. High breaking ball. Now he's in the hole. So unless the count goes to three and two, Bonds won't run. Unless he's trying to steal the base. So an aggressive play put on by Dusty Baker. Santiago could not put the ball in play. And now he's set up at one and two. Two out. Just a nasty breaking pitch from Isringhausen. The bottom fell out of this one. Matheny sitting away. He didn't need to sit away. Throw a pitch like that, you can throw it down the middle of the plate. Wicked top left knuckle curve to get Santiago. And now Reggie Sanders. Who had the bases loaded one out in front of him. With his team down by one in the seventh and struck out against Dave Veers. And in so doing fell to 0 for 12 in this NLCS. Tying run at first two out. Ball one to Sanders, who struck out on high, hard ones his last time up. Five four, St. Louis trying to win. The Giants' advantage will be two games to one. Two balls, no strikes. With the left hand hitting J.T. Snow on deck. Yeah, Reggie Sanders has laid off that high fastball. This at bat. Nobody warming for the Cardinals. It's all up to Isringhausen. On 2-0, and oh, Sanders. Can't catch up. 95 miles per hour, strike one. This fastball a little lower. Isringhausen needed a strike. He can't go back up the ladder until he gets another strike on Sanders. Two balls, two strikes, and Sanders had a pretty good rip at that pitch. Off the end of the bat, two balls, two strikes. Isringhausen and the Cardinals trying to make this a series again. The Giants winning the first two games in St. Louis. The Cardinals trying to win the first game here in San Francisco. I think Reggie Sanders found a hairline fracture in his bat. Matheny out to talk to Isringhausen. If you've had success and you know that the high fastball is good enough to get a hitter with a, a hitter with a blatant blind spot upstairs, you've got to go for it right now. I would be surprised to see this pitch anything other than a high fastball. 
McKinney called for it when he met with Veers out on the mound back in the seventh. Does he call for it again with Isringhausen on the mound trying to strike out the side. Tying run at first two out. 2-2 two -two pitch. Into right field falling in a hurry. Here comes Drew. Cardinals win game three. Isringhausen with a save. The Giants had the Cardinals down two games to none. A sloppy game early for St. Louis. The Giants could not take advantage. They end up stranding 11. And game four is tomorrow night. For Tim McCarver, I'm Joe Buck. So long from San Francisco. The final score is St. Louis 5, the Giants 4. Game four of the ALCS between the Twins and Angels is coming your way next.